During World War I, airplanes and airships emerged, especially airplanes. At first, most people didn't think much of these aircraft made of lightweight wood and canvas, thinking they were just for aerial reconnaissance. However, when pilots started taking machine guns and bombs into the sky, people on the ground could no longer laugh. They tried their best to stop these aircraft. In addition to developing fighter planes and anti-aircraft guns for active defense, people also proposed static defensive weapons, which are anti-aircraft balloons. Anti-aircraft balloons mainly rely on long steel wires hanging below the balloons to threaten aircraft. The adjacent balloons can also be connected horizontally with steel wires, forming a net-like aerial defense network. These steel wires may seem weak and not dense enough to stop aircraft easily, but in reality, the balloons sway in the wind and the wires also swing. As a result, there is a significant chance that the pilot, while controlling the aircraft and observing ground artillery and aerial threats, could collide with the steel wires. This situation is similar to a novice learning to drive. The more they try to avoid obstacles, the more likely they are to hit them. These steel wires pose a great threat to aircraft. They can cut into the aircraft like sharp knives, or even if they don't, they can severely impact the aircraft's flight posture. The steel wires can also get entangled with the propellers, and a direct collision with the balloons themselves could be even worse. Aircraft are quite helpless against these anti-aircraft balloons, as there are numerous and can remain on duty 24-7 once deployed. During a bombing raid, aircraft either have to bypass these balloons and risk missing targets, or take the risk of flying through them. Strafing the balloons with machine guns is futile, as it's difficult for aircraft to clear a large enough area in a short time. The longer aircraft stay over the targets, the higher the probability of being shot down. Similar to these anti-aircraft balloons are sea mines. Sea mines are explosive devices anchored at a certain depth in waterways, threatening passing ships. In response to the threat of sea mines, a method of cutting the anchored steel wires of the mines was developed. Minesweepers tow a steel wire submerged at a certain depth, and when it encounters the vertical steel wire of the sea mine, they collide, and the latter is cut off. This causes the mine to float to the surface, and then people can figure out how to handle the torpedo. Inspired by the Navy, the Air Force also considered using cutting methods to deal with anti-aircraft balloons. If aircraft were equipped with devices to cut or push aside the tethered ropes in advance, they could pass through the anti-aircraft balloons unobstructed. The Tu-2 medium bomber was a type of aircraft used by the Soviet Union in 1942. As a twin-engine tactical bomber, it proved to be very effective in combat and quickly became an important bomber for the Soviet Union. Based on the Tu-2, the Soviet Union conducted various technological experiments, one of which was a Tu-2 variant called the Paravan. This was an aircraft equipped with a tether-cutting device. To cut the ropes in advance, designers installed a six-meter-long cone protruding from the nose of the aircraft, with steel wires extending horizontally from the tip to the wings. The nose and wing structures were reinforced to ensure the steel wires were tight and could withstand collisions. This design allowed the aircraft to directly collide with the tether cables of the anti-aircraft balloons. However, it was unlikely to cut through them directly, given the different forces involved. Nevertheless, the angled steel wires could cause the tether ropes to slide off the sides of the aircraft, allowing the main body of the aircraft to avoid the threat of the ropes. Two Tu-2 paravans were produced, and flight tests were conducted in September 1944. The tests showed that the additional structure had little impact on the aircraft's flight performance. However, the results for cutting or pushing aside the tethered ropes of the anti-aircraft balloons were not satisfactory, likely due to various influences. Anti-aircraft balloons were common in the early and middle stages of World War II. For example, the British attacked the Taranto naval base during severe weather that destroyed the port's anti-aircraft balloons. In the London Blitz and the defense of Moscow, city defenders extensively used anti-aircraft balloons. In the late stages of World War II, due to resource consumption and advances in aviation technology, the frequency of anti-aircraft balloons in the main theater of war decreased. It seemed that this static defensive weapon was gradually becoming obsolete. 
The Soviet Union was not the only one to attempt this kind of method. During the same period, the German army also equipped some aircraft with similar devices. However, the Germans not only installed steel wires, but also cutting devices similar to blades, which could increase cutting efficiency. Regardless, adding these devices would affect the aircraft's flight performance. Coupled with the changes in aerial combat technology, people gradually abandoned anti-aircraft balloons. These burdens on the aircraft were no longer necessary. But did they completely disappear? It's clear they did not. Even today, helicopters retain cable-cutting devices, which are essentially scissor-like structures. When the aircraft collides with obstacles such as power lines, the wires slide into the V-shaped cut of the cutting device and are easily severed by the speed. Although it is different from cutting the tethered ropes of the anti-aircraft balloons, it can be considered a continuation of the technology.